the Raspberry Pi as a data input computer for use with the DHIS software. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is a uh, very low cost, $35 uh, computer based on an uh, ARM processor, which is the same processor that's found in most tablets and cell phones. Uh, this is the um, Raspberry Pi Model B, which has uh, uh, the Ethernet port, um, It has an Ethernet port, it has uh, two USB ports, a um, composite video output, a HDMI video output, um, and uh, an audio, audio output here. Um, it uses a SD card for its programs, and here I have an 8 gigabyte um, uh, SD card um, with the Raspbian, uh, which is a uh, Raspbian software, which is a Debian distribution. Um, it, it actually would fit on a 4 gigabyte card just fine, um, but I have the 8 gigabyte here. Um, there's different cases for it. Uh, this is one that, uh, that works pretty well. Um, it uses as a power supply a standard um, um, micro um, power adapter. Um, this is this Model B is one of the original Model Bs which has 256 megabytes of memory. Uh, the newer ones have 512 megabytes of memory. Um, I'm also running this at um, uh, a normal speed which is about 700 megahertz and um, although you can overclock it by about 50 percent if you're feeling, uh, feeling risky. Anyway, so let's plug it in here, and uh, I'll put the, uh, the cover on the cover on the, here, um, and uh, we've got, we've got it connected to the Ethernet here. Uh, although it works fine with uh, with adapters that um, oh, wireless adapters. So you can see here it's booting up. Um, now this is a um, this is the standard Raspbian uh, software distribution, which um, is a is a version of De a Debian compiled for this uh, processor. A um, couple things to note here. Um, I've also I've installed uh, Abbey Word, which is a uh, lightweight word processor, and Numeric, which is a um, a lightweight spreadsheet, which we which we can use. And also, most importantly, the Chromium web browser. All of these were installed just from the standard uh, repository using apt-get. Um, another nice thing about this being a Linux um, computer is that you can also install uh, something like DNS mask if you want to control uh, where this computer is used. Uh, you, can, you can lock it down pretty well in terms of what websites are, um, are allowed to be used. So um, let's just start up the uh, Chromium web browser here. One thing that you can notice is, I'll turn it over a bit here, is if you look down here, uh, this gives you an idea of the activity of the processor. And you can see it's turned green as it's starting up the, uh, um, uh, the web browser, which means that the CPU is at a, is at 100%. This gives you the CPU use over the last um, minute, um, so that uh, you can see there was a fairly intensive resources for about 30 seconds uh, as it as it loaded up the um, Chromium um, uh, web browser. I'm going to start. I'm going to go to the uh, DHIS2 uh, website.
and go to the, uh, the demo page. As you can see, the, uh, the uh, browser is fairly brisk without too much of a delay. Uh, I've got a good internet connection here, but I wanted to show you the um, uh, I wanted to show you the, the, the speed of the application on the processor itself. So I'll log in here. This is the uh, the Sierra Leone de demo site, which is on the uh, um, which is on the dhis2.org website, and I assume this is somewhere in Europe. Um, so, um, and I'm in California, so there is a bit of a a bit of a delay here uh, uh, on the internet, but uh, it shouldn't be very much. There's good connections here. So. Uh, just to show you um, how, how quickly it goes, primarily for use in data entry um, and running some reports, uh, you can see that, it's, um, uh, that it's, it's really pretty responsive. I'll click on here to open up the... Um, Uh, to, to open up some of the, uh, to do a data entry here, uh, let's just use the ART monthly summary and uh, do a November uh, data entry here. So here's the form. You see it pops up pretty quickly. Um, I can um, I can go from one cell to the next. There's a very slight delay when you click on the cursor to highlight one cell to the next. It's um, uh, it's it's almost uh, imperceptible, uh, and I don't think it would be of any uh, uh, any importance when you're uh, doing data entry. Um, the uh, again, if you you can see down here the uh, the activity um, when you do even just click to. Uh, change focus there's a there's a fair amount of activity but then it settles down right away so let's just enter some data as it might be done I just go across here um, now the, the DHIS software is designed so that it as soon as you enter a number in that number gets sent back to the server um, and then the cell turns green um, so you can see that happens very quickly here so that the you can see the processor is, is responding well, and if you again look at the activity down here, the activity is showing that it's, it's not really um, stressing the processor very much uh, as, it, as, it, as it switches, switches colors and as it's sending and receiving the data. Um, so that you can see that it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, very, it's quite usable, and this is the standard default configuration for the the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so this would be a, a, a very good data entry um, uh, system for the DHIS software. Um, the, uh, I just have a standard mouse and keyboard uh, attached and I, and I have a big screen uh, computer but any computer monitor uh, would work. It has both a composite um, VGA output, um, I mean a composite output, the standard yellow um, yellow uh, RCA jack um, as well as the HDMI so you do need to have a monitor that supports one or the other of those it does not support VGA so if you have a bunch of monitors that only have VGA they won't work with that but most monitors at least have a, uh, the standard yellow uh, RCA, RCA jack uh, that you can use um, newer monitors, of course, would have the HDMI, HDMI plug, or if they don't have uh, the HDMI, they'll have a DVI, which uh, you can buy a simple adapter to convert the HDMI to DVI. Um, the other thing is to show you the uh, offline data entry. If I just disconnect, if I unplug the, uh, let me just unplug the Ethernet here, um, and um, you should see. Uh, you, up here you get the your offline data will be stored locally. 
message so that this browser does support offline data storage so you can even if the internet goes down you can keep entering data um, and whoops I entered, it's entered some bad data in there uh, obviously and let's put some numbers in there it should be happier with that now if I reconnect the um, the network here plug the network back in up here there's data store you get the message there's data stored lo locally please upload to server so uh, we click the upload button uh, and then it's uh, it's it's uploaded that data that was entered offline onto the server so that the uh, the offline data entry you can see works uh, works perfectly so that if you have a um, poor internet connection which is subject to dropouts or delays and so on uh, it'll switch back and forth between online and offline data entry uh, automatically. Um, the other thing in terms of running reports, again, since the, um, um, the DHIS software is designed, most of the processing takes place on the server uh, so that the, uh, there's very little um, that uh, very, puts very, very, uh, very little load on the uh, on the on the if we just do like a data set report here I'm not familiar with all the data that's in here but let's see what's in here so let's do a data set let's do the ART monthly summary uh, period type let's try monthly and uh, I don't know if there, I don't know where there's any data but let's go back to February and let's just set, uh, select the whole country get the report um, well, it doesn't look like there's any data in here for 2012, but you can see it's, it's very fast because it, it, all of the processing is done on the server and all, the, all that happens here is that the, the browser just has to display uh, so that uh, it's, a, it's a very fast, um, very fast system. So the Raspberry Pi computer is a, is a good solution for entering data and even running some reports um, on the um, DHIS software. So in low resource environments, uh, you can um, use these inexpensive computers um, and they, they work quite well. Um, the, uh, the, the speed is, is very acceptable for, for, uh, for use. And the other advantage is since it runs Linux, you can uh, uh, you can lock it down to uh, uh, to restrict activities to just um, using the DHIS software if you wish. Uh, this prevents a lot of uh, random Facebook browsing. So uh, again, this is a good solution, inexpensive solution for low resource environments, uh, and uh, as you can see, it works works quite well.